this
maybe around 2005, right? um, going over even, even later. I'm, I'm not sure about the timeline, but when this was made, Google Maps was not available as an API. It was not available as a service. Craigslist data it was available, but maybe not as a service. You have scraped it. This guy took Craigslist data, you know, somehow managed to get all the details he wanted. And he, he managed to hack Google Maps into showing all this Craigslist data on the map. At that time, you could have searched Craigslist. So you even now, you can you know, search Craigslist plain. You, you just get a bunch of listings and the addresses, right? You're probably searching because, mostly because you don't know the area. And you, you, know, you need to find accommodation for setting up the and you have no idea whether this apartment is next to the other one or if it's 50 miles down the road, right? So, layering it on a map was a pretty useful idea. And what this gave rise was to this concept of taking data that's not really yours, right? Taking the data from a different place, putting them together, and making a piece of that. What, what is the importance of this particular app? When Google saw the success of this mashup, they really didn't have the uh, clear way of putting icons on the map. Right? They, they were basically uh, trying out how people would put maps. They, they didn't really have anything like an API or you know, any way to actually nicely program. When Google saw this, they actually hired the guy who made it. And the other thing they did was they, they figured that this is cool, meaning people are running through groups and jumping through groups to get this done. We should make these things available as services. So in a way, the ecosystem that you see today with all these mashups and you know layering of data on maps and all that was due to the <coughs> the 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 idea of mixing up services is very old. But idea of mixing up services in this way, where you have a certain visual component, or at least the new incarnation of it, was uh, inspired by this. So, yes. Basically, they never actually tried placing, combining, combining visuals and data like this. So we could actually have a map with location. Yeah, so at, at least in this case, this. Craigslist did not come up with this idea. Right? Of course, they, they have their own focus, and they did not come up with this idea. And Google didn't come up with this idea either. For all the, the might uh, brain power they have. But uh, again, uh, the, the, uh, the essence of this was you can put together uh, put together seemingly unrelated or seemingly, uh, you know, disparate data and make something useful. And then the, the importance of this one is that this is the, the mashup that showed people or showed all these Google and other companies that making your things available as services is going to ultimately create a big business. Um, so here's, a, here's another one. This is this I picked off a, a mashup repository that's and, and I saw this this as a you know useful thing. Of course, you you can try one thing if you want to date and stuff like that. This one is a crime map. So so you can say show me all the car car breaking so whatever carjackings in, in this area, where they are in the office. Like if you, you, of course you can you know, get, the, get a police report, get the police report and uh, you know, request them and find them out by yourself, right? But again, seeing them on a map makes, makes sense. So, so if you look at this one, uh, this crime, <coughs> this one, so let me, let me say what this is this is what it is. Pretty pretty simple idea, but still makes it very useful uh, 
are able to see what the <coughs> that okay. There is a concentration of auto batteries in this area. Right? And then uh, it's all done with public data. The, the data is out there. It's a matter of putting it there. Now these are what mashups are if you if you look for them, right? Uh, you know, if you search mashup, you probably find that. And there's uh, one thing that I, I want to point out is uh, the uh, the this website. Programmablelive.com. So programmablelive.com is one of the What are the different services? And more importantly, what are the kinds of different mashups that you can have? So, so programmablelive.com three years ago was a pretty simple website with uh, you know, uh, small, maybe like 100 or 200 mashups. Now it has several thousand mashups and a large number of APIs. So this probably would be a good one. For you to visit, if you want to find out what kind of different services are there. Like, not only Google offers mapping services, Bing offers mapping services. Right? And, and uh, then MapQuest goes there from early uh, on. There are different options uh, for you uh, if you want maps. There are different options for you if you want photo services. So, programmableweb.com is probably a good resource if you want to do your own map. Okay, how do we actually do mashups? So one of the things that came up in say around 2006 and 2007 was somewhat of a mashup bubble. I, I call it a bubble because it popped two years ago. Um, what happened was that almost all big tech companies got really interested in this idea of matching up services. And the, the, the first one that actually came up in, in nice composition was Yahoo. And very uh, uh, fortunately, Yahoo pipes still survive, right? still out there. But sadly, all the other guys, like Google has given up, and Microsoft has given up. Their services are no longer there, even for you to see. Uh, but Yahoo pipes is still there, so we'll use Yahoo pipes to service. Yeah. No, it's okay. um, so so these tools, all these three tools together, right, they and, and of course uh, there are some that I have listed. Like IBM had something called QBD Wiki, and, and when I, I was attending at IBM research in 2007, then we made a tool called uh, IBM Shareable Code. All of these tools, and then at least at that time, the value was. There. Everyone was doing a mashup, right? And uh, so what happened was, uh, so Google Mashup Editor was a text-based tool. Right? I'll, I'll just give a really simple explanation to all. Uh, yeah, so ma Google Mashup Editor has this XML-like syntax. So you can do a mashup. In When they were introducing the Mashup Editor, it was the, the Google IU the Google's you know, code summit in 2007, they did housingmaps.com and equal and it in two minutes. You can just it. So they basically just said, put a map here, put the text list field from here, grab this these locations and put them as marker. Using their custom XML language, they could uh, do it and actually at the time of the keynote, they did it live and, and showed that you, know, you can do this kind of composition is very, very happy. So it, it was good, but um, if you wanted to do something uh, you know, serious, then it was getting difficult. And again, it's very, very tightly made from Google search. Right? So if you wanted a Yahoo service, then there were some uh, you know, uh, roadblocks that you have to try. <coughs> so Microsoft has <coughs> Popfly. Popfly was uh, different from Mashup Editor in the sense that Popfly was a visual composer. There was no
no code that you write. You basically drag and drop these uh, you know, boxes like icons, connect them, and there are a number of parameters that you can change. So Popfly was a visual composer and maybe slightly more feature rich than say mashup editor. Uh, but again, uh, now not, not, none of them are available to play around with. At least at that time they were all free, right? They were all free and they were all uh, public. Um, so in a way mashup bubble has not. But mashups has not died. Many many things that, uh, that <coughs> people do with mashups do today, and if you check programmingweb.com, there's at least 10, 15 mashups adding to it every day. Yep. You said mashups use XML, and they all use that, or that just uh, no. So so the the case with mashups. So when we do the examples, you will see the case with mashups is that the services will, could be exposed in many different. One, one way most of these services are exposed is as XML data. Right? So when, when I say a service, what it simply means is that, let's say, let's say Craigslist. Right? What you see in Craigslist when you, you know, type, type Craigslist.com on the browser is a human version of whatever the data they have. So when I say a service, what it simply means is that all that data is served up to you in a way that program can easily consume. Say in XML, or if you heard uh, something called JSON. So JSON is, uh, JSON stands for JavaScript object. So it's, you can think of it as a stream format. Right? So it's, uh, uh, JSON is also a popular format, primarily because JSON is really easily programmable using JavaScript. Yeah. Is a lot of this kind of related to uh, the data scraping that was going on for like web apps and stuff? Yeah, because yes. it seemed to be an arms race of people <coughs> trying to get the data displayed in applications, yep, yep. and like particularly Yahoo trying to hide the data. Uh, right, right. Okay. So, so I, th I think uh, say around 2005, uh, when HousingNet.com came along and then people started opening up uh, their uh, services, uh, I, almost all others, including uh, Bing, that's Microsoft, uh, Yahoo, I think Yahoo even had it before uh, Google, and all of these guys post most of their stuff uh, as uh, Like Yahoo. Yahoo has a ton of services about you know, so, uh, that lets you fetch time, that lets you fetch geocodes, that lets you translate addresses, so many different services. Uh, and then Google as well. So um, when you go to create a manual, of course you all also have the plain old choice of programming the right? So you basically write a code in order to mix these sets. One good thing about uh, these uh, mashups, or program, programming the mashup, is that you get a lot of flexibility. And again, if you think of something like, say, mashing of Google sets, Google they, uh, took this whole idea of uh, web API. Uh, that is, now, when, when I said, when you said a service, what I mean is that data is served in a way that it, you can program right? So Google decided that they don't want to show up, show the user how the data comes from. The actual format on the wire, whether it's XML, JSON, or some other proprietary format, they didn't want people to see that. They didn't people want people to actually work with that data. So Google provided a number of JavaScript libraries. So Google mashups are basically JavaScript code, right? But it's it's not difficult to write because there there are a lot of abstractions, and you don't be, you have to be a you know, JavaScript guru to you know the code. If you need to know what to do with the again. Maybe a little bit of concept of function as an object like that. But again, you don't have to be a JavaScript. You don't, maybe you can even get, get a little job to write this again in like a uh, Because Google APIs are pretty you know, uh, abstract, meaning you can really easily for it. But the, the idea remains that is, you don't actually work with the raw data. 
you don't work with XML, you don't work with the actual you know, JSON or whatever the code data that comes from the wire, you work with JavaScript. Now, this is uh, also a thing that we are going to try out. Um, let me actually show you how to create a very quick matchup using Yahoo Bytes. So if you have your computers, you can actually uh, try it along with me. So it's, so it's bytes.yahoo.com. So you see something like this. If you already have a account, <coughs> you can sign in. Unless you sign in, it won't let you. Uh, save the account. You can try it out, but it won't let you save. <coughs> What you do is you go to a <coughs> create file, and uh, okay, so because Kevin has not been here before, it sort of pops up this thing saying, "Oh, do you want to watch a video?" Or something like that. Let's keep that aside. So what you see here is basically the mashup build. It's actually a composer, but it's uh, it's more of a graphical. Composer. You don't actually write code. What you do is you drag and drop. The so let, let's do a really simple mashup, right? The, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, grab uh, some Yahoo local data, right? That is, uh, grab and drop this one. And I can probably say, find, let's say, say something like it's, uh, So this is this is what I want. 
and okay, let's say this is the only thing I want. It's not really a matter, but let's say. What you do is you grab the end. Let me actually show it once again. You grab this one, which is the which signifies the output, and drag it here down to the place where it says pipes output. Okay. Pretty self explanatory stuff. If if you go and hide out. Click here, it will actually show you where you can draw it. Right? So this one is a really simple <coughs> composition and you can actually see uh, some of the, the data being shown up, uh, uh, show, being, uh, uh, showing up here. Right? So, <coughs> okay, let me uh, save it. Then it, it gives me an option to run this and, uh, this one. So running it means you know, uh, grabbing this uh, data. And Yahoo takes care of layering it over a mass. Why? Because it does have new portfolio. If you want to access this you know, later, it has a unique user. <coughs> so you, know, you can send it to somebody else and say, hey, dude, look, this is my match. Right? Um, so, so, so this this is the, the list of items. If you want, to have a list of it. Right? And uh, this this is Yahoo bytes in action in a really simple. Way. Now you can do a whole a lot of other things with uh, uh, <coughs> this this one. So let me show you one other thing. That is, uh, let's say this whole thing of hard coding. And Dave in Ohio is pretty late. Yeah, of course. We are in Dave. He may be able to do this, but you can have your friend in California. He doesn't care about being the father of the Dave, right? So if you want something like user input, right? So there are user input components that you can, uh, you can use. So you can say, oh, I don't want to hard code either the pizza or the so what you do is you basically <coughs> text input, drag and drop one of these, right? And now the output of this one, which is this bubble, right? You want it to become the input of your fine box, right? So you basically simply drag and drop it, right? which which means. Grab the input from the user, use it as the input for this one. So, so again, I'm going to change it here. Of course, we can keep the name as text input, but that's fine. Uh, we'll say, what do you want to find? Position, let me say, one default. So, if you don't put anything, then it's going to take that. So, that's one. Of course, there's, there's something called location input, which is exactly like the, the text input. Right? So I'm going to say the uh, same thing that is uh, uh, And this one is going to be the input. So now, none of these items are coming from a hard coded value. They are both coming from the user input. Okay. Um, yeah, so this guy didn't get So let me save it and run the pipe once again. So it's still going to work the same way, but now there is an interesting bit of uh, Items here, now you can input your own thing. So let me set up the pizza from Mandel. And, and similarly, you, you can, if you want, change this one as well. <coughs> so, uh, uh, not very really sure. So it, it, it depends on what the, what the components are.
what kind of components. Right? So uh, this is really simple math. And how, how long did it take? So if you've been you know, uh, playing around with this, this we can do it in two, three minutes. Right? It's pretty really simple and fast. So let's just see. take the URL for this and add it to your website. Yeah. So, so, so right here, once you do the pipe, you get a URL here, right? This you can send to anyone. So this, this actually can work by itself. It's out there forever? Until you resume it. Yeah. Or just to give you a service. Huh? Or to let this give you. Yeah, I, I suppose they may have some limitation of requests per hour. Or something. Mm -hmm. right, so it's, otherwise, it should be unsustainable. Right? Uh, but it is public and it is out. If you want, you can even make something private, meaning they have to sign in to, to use it. Right? Um, yeah, I, th I think you have to publish it. Yeah. Uh, before it actually becomes uh, you know, public, public. Uh, still it's free. Let's, let's make a different matchup, right? So let me say a new matchup. So let me do a data matchup. So Yahoo Pipes actually came up as a data matchup for data mixing. Right? I'm going to play. So I'm going to. My blog. It's, it's hosted in Blogger. So I'm going to pick my blog. And uh, <coughs> Blogger has the RSS. So, so for every blog, there's an RSS. Right? Of course, you can pick your, your, your favorite blog. So right here, okay, right here, there's a, a link to an RSS. <coughs> so you can say view RSS feed, which actually is a uh, like a And then create a real 
leader, like a Google app, that fetches data and shows all the news items in one piece. So that's how, uh, if you remember the, the Mozilla tool, right? so even browse for Firefox, uh, Chrome, I'm not sure about Chrome, Firefox, Firefox, all these Mozilla apps that are assisted. So you can say, I want to subscribe to these feeds, which basically means that you know, they'll show the URLs and periodically fetch the <coughs> The other good thing about RSS was RSS had a timestamp. So the programs knew exactly when it was published and they could arrange it. Right? So at least for historical reasons, RSS reads are still there. And uh, uh, because of their simplicity, you know, because of their, their uh, abundance, that is, there are ton of libraries that can be RSS. Right? Because of their abundance, they are still there. So basically, this is the RSS feed, the public RSS feed for Minecraft. Now, what I'm going to do in types is simply say, okay, fetch feed. There's a fetch feed thing. Grab it here, um, and then I'm going to put my blog URL here.
caching affects it some, sometimes. Uh, there are some, some things that, uh, um, yeah, may, maybe this is right. May, maybe this has uh, uh, certain things. So, so let me actually see if uh, apply <coughs> something to print you. Let me apply this to my See the results down there, right? Yeah, yeah, so the results down there are correct, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Somehow it didn't uh, show up in the actual pipes. Yeah, pipes do have some big stuff. But, but you get the idea, right? So uh, this one, I'm, I'm guessing that it's basically because of caching. But you can apply filters in between, right? Create, uh, create, uh, create or filter out certain items. Then you, there are certain things that you can do with two fields. Let's say you want to mix this up with another field. So there's, there's something called uh, union, which takes two fields and makes it in one. So you can have a union in between, right? And uh, then two fetch fields, connect them together, and then, you know. So there are so many different things that you can uh, try out in this one. Um, one, uh, one thing that is important with this one, this pipe, is in this case, we created a field. The output was supposed to be like, like some data, right? Let's say we are not interested in seeing this in the browser. Right now, what we have is some data in the browser. Um, let's say we are interested in making this a service to another one, right? to, to some other nation. You can <coughs> easily do that when you when you go here. Right? You can say, okay, I won't get this as an RSS, <coughs> and Yahoo gives you a different link that actually fetches this data as the RSS. Or you can say, I want to get this as JSON, where Yahoo automatically converts the data that is created to JSON. So there are many other options that, that you can do. You can say, you know, you can get it even as PHPs. So, so if, if I go here, let's say get as JSON, right? This is actually a JSON script. It may look really, uh, Ugly, but uh, this is pretty uh, easy to consume using the JavaScript. So, if you are doing JavaScript stuff, then this is probably the best way to use uh, the, the consume the data. You see, the only difference to the Pipes URL is this guy. The, the parameter <coughs> part of the score render for this, which construct the Yahoo service. So Yahoo Pipes is this is a really simple uh, you know uh, explanation to Yahoo Pipes. But you see, the more you tinker, the better things that you can do. Right? And I, I suppose there was some uh, some third party uh, things that you, you could also add here. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure whether they are still supporting it, but 
there were people who actually wrote these components that we can use. Yeah, there, there are a lot of things that you can do. So, so it's up to you to you know, figure out what you can do. Or you can even create your own feeds if you want. Uh, create interesting things that, that, that probably will be useful. Um, so this is Yahoo Pipes in a nutshell. And then there's, uh, there are other tools that I, I said, like Mashup Editor and Popfly. Microsoft Popfly was, Popfly was pretty similar to this one. But they they had those components were more powerful and uh, I think even the output if I remember right, the output of the mashup, you could create a component like a silver light plugin that you can embed in your videos if you want. So so the output was either flash or silver light or whatever the, the, the component or embeddable object that you can so, so it was pretty powerful in that sense. Okay, now let's move on to a different type of mashup building. I'm gonna uh, show you how to do it programming. Now, when you uh, when you program a mashup, right? There are many choices. One of the one of the choices is JavaScript. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of JavaScript. Um, who, who, who worked with JavaScript? Very small. Okay, L little bits, bits, right? And, and I'm, um, everybody knows about object oriented programming, that kind of stuff. Right? You don't have to know JavaScript. I'm, I'm just saying. So, uh, because the ob concept of objects is, you know, everywhere. The only difference, the only important difference that you have to notice with right? JavaScript kind of code, kind of code, is in JavaScript, a function is an object. That is one of the biggest differences. And you will see, in many cases, many functions require you to pass a function object. So all you do is you you pass a name of a function. Right? So, so, so JavaScript, the, the biggest difference in the notation is, or notation or the working of, of the script, is that there are these functions that get gets passed as like variables. Keeping that in mind, let, let's uh, look at uh, a really, really simple matter. Right? We, we, let's say we are building a HTML based uh, mashup that that is similar to what we did earlier, where you type a, say, pizza, and hit a uh, button, and then it shows you these are they on or markers on right? Now, how do we do this? <coughs> what we are going to use in this one is Google's uh, Map API. So Google's Map API is it's a pretty sophisticated, thing, meaning there are so many you know, different options that you can. And, and if you've seen maps over the years, you, you know that they have added a lot of features over the years. Like earlier, it used to be just a train map, you know, there's terrain and traffic and you know, whatever, whatnot, right? So, all these different things uh, you can access programming. That's a good thing. Now, if you go to Map API and you can, so they, they have a, a whole bunch of uh, documentation and examples. So you could do, uh, you know, just Google for Maps, Google Maps API, and you get the documentation. And then they they do have all these bits and pieces of uh, how do you put a mark on, a map, or, or how do you change an address to a geo code, or how do you do a photo uh, photo overlay on a map, things like that. So they have a ton of examples. We are going to use a really, really simple, basic uh, map, and you don't actually need any tools. I'm just going to have a HTML file. Um, when when you are using HTML, there is a catch. Anybody? 
anybody heard of uh, same domain policy? Yeah, this is slightly different. There was a 
it's not that it's only on this case. So, so this script, I'm, I'm very simply doing this. So I'm loading maps directly from So this link, if you look at this link, this link loads a JavaScript from the Google site. Now, what is important is that if you look at the Maps API, they say that you have a key. A key is basically a string, a string of characters. So the key is how they track who's using the website. It's free for them. There's no cost. But you, they still need to know who's accessing the API. So you have to have a key, and you have to pass it as the parameter in the URL. So, if you look at the Maps API, I said, 
center it and put a marker in Dayton, if you look at this, this little piece of code, I'm saying put a marker in the current map, the, the, this map object. And uh, position it on Dayton, which is basically the complete of platform that I provide, right? <coughs> may not be exactly Dayton, but be in Dayton. Yeah. Where do you use that marker variable? What's that? Where I'm, I'm not using it either. It's it's just there if I if I want a you can you can just get rid of it if you want. Okay. Right. Because the map object is passed to the marker in its construction. So uh, it's uh, you don't have to have a complete. The only case is that when you want to clear the marker, right? meaning you, you want to clear the map and put a new set of marker, maps API New version, version three, has no global method that lets you clear all markers. So basically, they were, there was a method in version two, which was something like clear overlays, or clear the map completely. But uh, the new version does not have that method. So the recommended way is keeping track of the markers and objects like this in my record and setting it to map to not. That's how it out how it is. So you may need a reference, but at least in this example, you can do it now. Um, so let's do something useful. Right? Let's do something useful. Let's add a search for a local search. How do you do So one thing, what I said about the, uh, the same domain policy is now, since we are in our own domain, which is my uh, this is not really a server you can just just hide there's uh, no way that you can provide me with the new locations so now we'll give locations to search here. so basically what uh, what we are going to do is we are going to use a library from google again this library is integrated into uh, the maps j script as well so you all you have to do is pass an extra parameter fetch that library as well. So basically what we are going to do is we are going to simply use that library to make calls to Google search, like Google local search, fetch the data and place markers on the map uh, based on whatever you need, right? Okay. So the first things first. First we need a button. I have a button, but uh, Whatever the function that it's, uh, whatever the function it invokes is not there yet. So let let's keep that in mind. Say its name is fetch data. I've already written a fetch data. Let me uh, clear this. I've already written a fetch data. So fetch data is pretty pretty simple. So, 
basically what you do is you write the function itself here without a name. Right? So you see the difference in this function versus this function? There's no name. That's why it's not So you just write the function, the whole thing, then then and there exactly. This guy, so let me let me show you what happens here. The map is going to show up fine, no, no difference. But uh, when I hit the when I hit reload, it just says it lost the place. It means that it went into that function, executed that, right? Now let me uncomment this one and uh, get rid of my other. What now what we simply do is we walk through the we walk through the result, which is which is an array, right? And we create a marker passing the position and the type. And then uh, because we are passing this one as man, right? So it adds to the This is where I said we need to keep track of the markers in order to be able to live there. So I'm just keeping it to an array. Right? So this is pretty much one one programming you can look at it, except the different things. And uh, when is this fixed rate going to be uh, work? I have a clear OLS function in PC, because this is how Google uh, advocates to do that. It's kind of the array, markers, array. <coughs> Here, you just go through the array and then create one of the So let's see, let's see how this works. So this guy, now, what we've done is we passed certain known parameters. Now you see that it suddenly adds a set of markers.
was actually thinking both of them.